Hey everybody, today I am going to be reviewing The Fablemans. This was directed by Steven Spielberg. I think this is maybe the most personal film that uh, Steven Spielberg has made from a very literal standpoint, and uh, one I know that he has been thinking about for many, many years, but maybe he just didn't feel ready to meet the challenge of it. I don't know, maybe he just needed more perspective in order to kind of like make sense of the past and find more confidence there. I don't know, but you know, it took till 2022 for it to fully uh, materialize. And this is a coming of age story about a family named the Fablemans, and they are kind of a stand-in for um, Steven Spielberg's family. And uh, as I said, this is semi-autobiographical, and um, it is about Spielberg's formative years and a lot of the different memories that shaped him into the filmmaker that he is today. And when it comes to Spielberg, especially when I look back at his whole career, because he is obviously getting up in age, uh, you know, he's somebody that I admire a lot. And I know that there's a lot of like cinephiles out there that like to turn their nose up at him. But uh, I don't know, when it comes to just great entertainers or people that are great at making entertainment, I think he's one of the best. And I am more inclined to use words like escapism and entertainment compared to words like artist and art when I talk about uh, Spielberg. Not to say that his films aren't artistic. Of course they are. They're very artistic. But um, he just makes a certain style. When I think about his movies, I look at them as movies, less as film. His quality as a filmmaker, no matter what the subject matter is, no matter how big the spectacle of it is, he reminds you what it means to feel warmth, and he reminds you what it means to feel a, a sense of innocence. Like you are seeing a movie for the first time, but through the eyes of a child, and I think that's a very, very special thing to be able to create for audiences. And I do think his best films are more like his escapist entertainment and less more like the, the heavy historical stuff. I just think it's more appropriate to his point of view. And I think all of that is important in regards to The Fablemans because this is his life and it is how he perceives it, at least how he recalls it. Which means that this film is going to be a certain type of film. You know, his version of his story is going to be very different than, say, if we were watching a movie about Terrence Malick's life directed by him. The Fablemans just has a lovely warm golden hue about it, but um, it also has kind of a thick syrupy layer of sentiment at the same time. While there are certain complexities that are brought out a lot thematically, other parts of it are maybe glossed over. And naturally there is a very neat and controlled quality to said perspective, and some maybe see it as too indulgent. And at times I do think the way that they show the messiness of life here and how it's meant to serve a greater symbol so far as how you discover your identity and your passion and all of that may feel a little bit uh, mismanaged, but at the same time it is a Spielberg film, and Spielberg is naturally an optimist. And he just really enjoys marinating in the charm and what is uh, cinematic and what is emotionally engaging, and that is very important. That is the core of the story, and I think he, all of that is handled really well. But just as an experience, I thought the movie was really lovely and moving and certainly bittersweet, but it has so much heart to it. And sure, some of it is a little bit too schmaltzy, but to dismiss it all as schmaltz, I think, is to uh, misunderstand uh, the storyteller and the filmmaker here. I really enjoyed the first act of the film just because you have all of these little vignettes of a child's life and they feel really quaint and really serendipitous. Most of all tangible, like a, like a chapter in like a non-fiction piece or, or something like that. Uh, it definitely captures the textures of a world that you miss even though I wasn't even alive at that time, and yet I, I somehow miss it watching the film. It's just the little things, like how they're always having family dinner, but they're eating out of paper plates and eating with like plastic cutlery, and then after they're finished, they just throw all the, the dirty plates and everything at the center, and then she just takes the uh, disposable tablecloth and throws it all in the trash. It's tiny details like that that give it so much dimension and give us insight into the character, because of course, that dinner table image, I think, is very telling about the mother here and her uh, struggles with uh, domesticity. These characters and in particular the parents here, I think they really come alive on screen and uh, their conflicting points of view uh, act as a trajectory for the film's message in, in certain ways. And this is made clear in the very first scene when the, when the two parents are taking the little boy uh, to see his very first movie, and that's just a, a wonderful moment. You see you know, the first time he ever receives a camera. Little anecdotes and stray images, like uh, during the tornado where you see like the, the grocery store buggies kind of going across the street and, um, you know, seeing all the kids riding their bikes, getting really excited about the movie that they're gonna make this weekend with their friends. And of course, these are just early shades of, of greater things to come and it's cool to see them in these early forms. Um, uh, we have the father here that is played by Paul Dano. He's more, you know, the logical parent, the one that's trying to keep everybody sane and focused and uh, you got to attend to your duties. But he's not a stereotype. And I was really curious how Spielberg was going to handle, you know, the depiction of the father, just because I know that he has struggled in the past with his, his real father. So I wondered how they would try to villainize him or not. But um, yeah, I thought he was handled for the most part with a lot of care. Um, 
The performance here is very honest and very gentle, and you know, he's clearly just a guy who wants to keep his family unit healthy. He may not be perfect, he may not see eye to eye with his son, but what I love is that he really tries. He really tries to connect with his kids, and he wants to be as fun in the eyes of his children as they feel about their mom. And the mom here is played by Michelle Williams, the wonderful Michelle Williams, and she gives just a great performance as always. And uh, she's really the crux of the conflict here. And uh, she is a talented pianist who uh, never got to fully realize her dream. She sacrificed that aspect of her identity to become a mother. And because of that, she feels very stifled and she struggled uh, with maybe some mental health issues. Just tiny shades of like woman under the influence or something like that. But um, yeah, she's a character who's very curious and she hangs somewhere between fantasy and reality. There is a spacey sort of childlike uh, energy to her that makes you really want to protect her. Her sense of adventure and joy when it's really present, it just feels really vivid. It's so radiant. But also while she's, you know, dancing alone in her nightgown in the light, there's something about it that is beautiful but also very haunting and melancholy and you can just feel how lost that she is and I think that moment is maybe one of the best moments in the entire film. And the son is closer in personality to the mother compared to the father and so you know naturally her parenting style is maybe more uh, appealing to a child because she's you know more the cool mom. But this is where a lot of this identity is forged in contrast to the father because uh, the mother here believes that you've got to go for your dreams no matter what. She believes that you don't owe anybody anything, that your life is your Yours and you should never settle for anything, even if it's love. But she's also the one who really sees her son and she really knows what he wants and she encourages it always. She's an inspiration to him in that sense. And her own journey of happiness takes maybe its own complicated path towards clarity in similar ways to her son. I think the stuff where he's making the home movies with his family and his friends are just great, just because you get to see so many meta angles to things. But also I just like the way they're used just from a narrative perspective, how he is beginning to kind of formulate his ideas about the world, his own morals uh, as he matures, and how those things sort of indirectly make their way into his films, whether it's through like the plot of the story or through the directing style, or just simply how he works with actors, how he relates to them. Like when he's making the war film as an example, and you know, as his family dynamic in real life is starting to become more chaotic, you know, he uses that in order to direct his actor to try to find the motivation for why he's feeling such sadness. Even though what he's shooting has nothing to do with his family, it's all coming through in the pathos. So moments like that I think are really crucial. But what I think is the most interesting is how the big turning points for our character do not exist when he's making more of these like war epics and such. They actually come from more intimate moments. They come from you know, just family home movies that he's made, a camping trip, or just like, you know, seniors day at the beach. It's through the dynamics of the real people in his life and how he films them or how he sees them after the fact, and that becomes the key to his evolution. And it can be a weird thing exploring and merging art and life together in a very self-aware way and uh, how you make sense of that, especially in a film like this. But the metaphor there, and I think it's done really well at certain points in the film, it's, you know, just about how movies can reveal things that maybe are very painful, that are hard for us to face. And I think as his home movies of his family start to grow sadder and sadder and more bittersweet, you know, obviously it changes the way that he views film and art. So all of that I think is just really interesting. Unfortunately though, I still have a lot of issues and a lot of them do come out in the second half, but especially the third act of the film. I just don't think that the messages of the film are quite clicking in place with what's happening on screen, with the actual narrative. For me, as the film goes on, maybe the artistic instincts and maybe what they're trying to say, it's not quite matching with the family drama aspects of things. It just feels like they're a little bit, they're kind of fighting against each other. Once the film was over, I found myself pondering all kinds of different ideas that the film presented to me, and yet, it just, I never found myself arriving at anything concrete where I was like, yes, stick the landing. And I also did struggle with the writing, unfortunately. It feels like so many of the characters in this movie take it upon themselves to spell out very significant uh, turning points for our main character. Like Uncle Boris, he's a character who comes in and visits the family kind of at a crucial point in the story, and he reveals one of the key messages uh, of the film when it comes to art and sacrifice. And yet the whole thing just felt really hollow and just kind of like a disposable device. There was nothing really original about it. I I do think that the film really could have benefited from some editing. I think it is too long and I do wish 
I think there are certain moments that encapsulate so much that the film is trying to say and they really sing. And there are other moments I'm like, oh, I wish you could maybe search more in your memory banks there and try to find something more resonant that really allows the themes to come through better. But as it stands, at times, I just feel like there are a few loose anecdotes that are struggling to find a cohesive form compared to maybe the first half of the film. But I'm not saying that the film is a mess by any means because I, I really don't think it is. It's just a little lost. And while I am critical of it, I did really enjoy the film. I thought it was beautifully made and for all its flaws, it is still emotionally stirring in the ways that only Spielberg can really do. I don't care what anybody says, even when his films don't come together, he still has it. He still has that, that same spark that I love about him. He can inspire. And I do think it really stands apart from any other Spielberg project that I've seen, but also just, I think, from a complicated standpoint in terms of what it's saying, I think it really sets itself apart from other Spielberg films. And I think there's something really wonderful about the way he uses memory in order to honor his parents in such a lovely way. I I think the main character here, or the Spielberg stand-in, whatever you want to call him, I think the main takeaway here is that he's somebody that as he is developing his own thoughts about the world and all that, he's starting to become an individual and therefore he's starting to see the people in his life as individuals. He's starting to see his mother and his father and his sisters, all the people around him as very fully dimensional, complicated human beings with their own issues with identity, their own wants and fears and dreams. This is nowhere near among my favorite Spielberg films. I think for now at least those days are uh, long gone, but uh, I do think this is a very pleasant and lovely entry into the uh, Spielberg canon. And I think especially for holiday time, just, you know, family and all of that, I think it is worth your time. But that is the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to plug my website as always. It is deepfocuslens.com. I'm an artist. I do commission portraits and I also sell prints of my work. If that is something that you're interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a question about a commission or a print, you can always email me. My email is in the description box below as well. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my patrons who are wonderful. Guys, thank you so much for your support and welcome to the new members. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.